Hey, let us talk about the Tonji again. And this time, let's go on a little longer journey. And talk about none other than the Norse goddess, Freya. The goddess of love, beauty and magic. In the enchanted world of Norse mythology, there is one goddess who stands out more than the rest. Freya. She is not just about beauty and love. She is the embodiment of passion, power and magic. A goddess who has lived through endless stories of love, joy and pain. And the Norse gods? Well, they all knew she was one of the top gods in their pantheon. By the way, her name means lady, and she wasn't just any goddess. She belonged to the Vanir tribe, the gods and goddesses connected to nature, fertility and magic. But after some big events, she became part of the Aesir gods too, blending two powerful divine realms. She was a lover of life's pleasures and thrills, always chasing joy. And when it came to magic? Well, she was fierce, able to control desires, bring prosperity, and heal. So Freya wasn't just about appearances, she was as powerful as she was beautiful. So, let me tell you the story of Freya. But as always, before we are getting started, please like this video and subscribe. And if possible, share this video as well. Now, with that being said, let's get right into it and begin with the birth and family of Freya. Freya was born in the magical lands of Manaheim, a place of beauty and deep connection to nature. She was the daughter of Njord, the god of the sea, and a goddess whose name we don't even know for sure. Some say her mother was Nertus, a Germanic goddess of peace and abundance. The stories of Nertos involve ancient rituals, like for example, laying down arms and traveling in a sacred cart. It was all about harmony and plenty, which must have influenced Freya's own story. By the way, Freya also had a twin brother, Freya, the god of fertility, wealth and harvest. Freya was famous for his awesome ship, Skit Platinir, which could fold up into a pocket-sized version, and a magical sword, and could fight on its own. With parents like Njord and Nertus, and a brother like Freya, Freya's early life was filled with natural forces, magic, and the cycles of life. Freya also married a mysterious god named Odre, whose name means furious or passionate. Ultra wasn't around much, often traveling across the nine realms, leaving Freya alone. And her grief over his absence was so deep that it turned her tears into red gold, symbolizing how powerful her love and longing for him were. Together, they had two daughters, Hnos and Gersemi. Not much is known about them, but they were said to be as beautiful as the treasures of the world. Now, Freya, the Norse goddess who embodies love, beauty and magic, stands as one of the most captivating figures in mythology. But she is more than just a pretty face. Freya is a goddess who seeks pleasure, power and the thrill of life. Whether it's through her allure, her magical powers, or her role in battle, she holds her own in the realms of gods and mortals alike. Freya wasn't just about looking beautiful or spreading love. She was one of the Vanir gods, a tribe of deities deeply connected to nature, fertility, and magic. But her story didn't stop there. Freya became an honorary member of the Aesir gods, thanks to some intense events that unfolded. This goddess didn't just play around in the realms of love and fertility. She also became a powerful force in the world of war and sorcery. Her magic wasn't just for beauty, it was a tool for power 
health and prosperity, making her one of the most formidable beings in Norse mythology. So, Freya was the complete package, beauty, love, fertility, and the war rolled into one powerful deity. A magical necklace, facing Garmin, represented more than just wealth. It symbolized her strength and influence. She didn't just sit around looking pretty, she was a fierce protector, and she played an important role in the battlefield. In her afterlife realm, Volkwanger, Freya claimed half of the four warriors, welcoming them into her halls. But she wasn't just a goddess of battle, she was also a master of Saedru, a magical art that allowed her to shape destiny itself. Saedru was the form of magic that could predict the future, alter fate, and even change reality. Freya was a true master of this craft, passing it on to Odin and others. So, Freya was more than just a goddess of love. She was a Volva, a seeress with the ability to look into the future and control fate. As the most skilled practitioner of Seidel, Freya used her powers not just to divine the future, but to shape it. Her magical abilities made her one of the most powerful figures in the Nine Realms. Freya's connection to the fate was so deep that she could change the very fabric of the universe with a wave of her hand. A mastery of a Seidel made her perfect guide for those seeking answers, whether they were gods or mortals. Freya was at the center of a massive conflict between the Aesir and Vanir gods. The Aesir initially saw her as a powerful ally, but soon began to resent her for the moral decay they believed her magic had caused. This tension led to the Aesir Vanir War, a major event in Norse mythology. It was a war between brute force and magical skill. The war eventually ended in a truce, symbolized by the exchange of hostages, including Freya, her brother Freya, and their father, Njord. The truce wasn't perfect, though, and it resulted in a deep sense of mistrust between the two factions. But this period of peace did lead to the creation of Kvazir, the wisest being in all the realms embodied the newfound harmony. Now, Volkwanger, often called the Field of People or Field of Armies, was the finding resting place for various in Norse mythology. It was the celestial home of Freya, offering a star contrast to Odin's famous Valhalla. While Valhalla was known for being the Hall of the Brave, where Odin gathered warriors to prepare for Ragnarok, Volkwanger had its own special role. Here, Freya welcomed half of the fallen warriors to her holds, with the other half being taken to Valhalla by the Valkyries. The exact criteria for choosing who goes to Volkwanger are a mystery, but one thing is certain, it was a place for those who had fought valiantly. Freya's hole in Volkwanger was called Sesrumnir, which means hall with roomy seats. It was a majestic and welcoming place, where Freya herself presided over the souls of the fallen. Although we don't have many details about Volkwanger, it's clear that this realm was more than just a resting place. In some Norse texts, it's suggested that Freya may have opened her halls to others, not just barriers. Like in Alfoldr's saga, where a character dines with Freya in the afterlife. This gives Folkwangre an even deeper and more mysterious meaning, showing that Freya's power and influence stretched beyond just the battlefields. 
Arya's role in the Folkvangru and as a master of Saitaru, which would be Norse magic, shows how deeply she was involved in both life and death. She wasn't just a goddess of beauty and love, she was also a guardian of the brave and a master of destiny itself. In Folkvangru, she guided the souls of those who had thought and fallen, making it a place of both honor and rest. And Freya's role as a protector and guide shines through the tale of Otar, a man who needed her help to trace his lineage on important bits. In this story, found in the poetic Edda, shows Freya's determination and her willingness to use her powerful magic to help those she favored. When Otar was caught in a tough spot, unable to trace his ancestry, Freya didn't hesitate to step in. She transformed Otar into a pig, Hildi Svini, and set off on a journey to consult Hindla, a seeress who was known for her wisdom. But when Hindler refused to help, Freya wasn't about to back down. She threatened Hindler's life, determined to get the information Otter needed. Freya's boldness paid off as Hindler finally recounted Otter's complex genealogy. To ensure that Otter would never forget this crucial information, Freya had Hindla give Otta a magical drink called Mini Öl, which would imprint the knowledge deep into his memory. This act not only helped Otta win his bed, but also highlighted Freya's fierce loyalty and protective nature. She wasn't just a goddess of love and beauty, she was a powerful ally to those who proved themselves worthy of her aids. Freya's beauty and irresistible allure play a huge role in Norse mythology. One of the most striking stories about her comes from Snorri's prose Edda, where Freya was caught in a dangerous bargain. The gods were approached by a giant, Jötun, who offered to build an unbreachable fortress to protect them from the giants of Jotunheim. But there was a catch. The giant wanted not only the sun and moon, but also Freya's hand in marriage. The gods, desperate to protect their realm, reluctantly agreed to this outrageous deal. But only on the condition that the fortress be completed by the first day of summer. The giant agreed, but only if his powerful stallion, Svatli Fadi, could help him with the work. And so the construction began. As the days went by, the goddess grew anxious about losing Freya. So they devised a clever plan to stop the giants. Loki, the master of Thrix, turned into a female horse and seduced Svatli Fari, leading him away from the worksite. With the giant's plan now ruined, he realized he couldn't finish the fortress in time and flew into a rage. He threatened to destroy the gods. But Thor, always ready for a good fight, stepped in. With a swing of his hammer, Mjolnir, Thor easily took care of the giant, saving the gods and of course Freya from a terrible fate. Another tale of Freya's beauty comes from the poetic Edda. Specifically, in the Frimskvita. In this story, a king of the giants, Frimir, steals Thor's hammer, Mjolnir. Thor, desperate to get it back, enlists Loki's help, and they turn to Freya for assistance. Loki uses Freya's magical falcon feathers to fly to Jotunheim, where Frimir rules. Only to find that the giant has hidden the hammer deep in the ground. When Frimir demands Freya's bride in exchange for the hammer, 
Freya is furious. She refuses to be bargained for like a piece of property. This leads to a humorous plot twist where Thor disguises himself as Freya and Loki as her mate to recover the hammer from the giants in the most unexpected way. Now, Freya's beauty and sensuality have often stirred controversy and intrigue. One of the most famous tales involving her and the dwarves is the story of the Plingaman Necklace, or Prising Gum, which means necklace gleaming like the sun. This radiant golden necklace was crafted by master dwarves in the Norse world. It was said to be incredibly beautiful and powerful, and Freya was immediately drawn to it when she found the dwarves working on it in a cave. The dwarves agreed to give her the necklace, but there was a condition. Freya had to spend one night with each of them. Freya, of course enchanted by the beautiful necklace, reluctantly agreed to their demands. However, Loki, always scheming, informed Odin about Freya's bargain. Odin, who had no love for Freya's actions, ordered Loki to steal the necklace. Loki, of course in true trickster fashion, turned into a flea and snuck into Freya's bedroom. While she slept, he bit her on the cheek, causing her to turn over and giving him a chance to steal the necklace. When Freya realized the necklace was gone, she confronted Odin to her dismay. Odin revealed that he knew about her dealings with the dwarves. Odin told her he would only return the necklace if Freya performed a very strange task. She had to cause two kings who ruled over twenty others to fight an endless war. This war would continue until the Christian king, Olaf Tryggvason, arrived to end it. Freya, although reluctant, agreed. This story is often interpreted as a smear against Norse paganism by Christians, trying to paint Freya as a promiscuous and morally questionable goddess. Clearly, I do not like that part. And now, finally, Ragnarok, he cut a glistening destruction of the entire cosmos, which marks the end of many legendary tales in Norse mythology. This apocalyptic event foretold the fate of the gods, leading to a great winter, societal collapse, celestial upheavals, and the eventual release of monstrous beings like Fenrir and Jormungandr, the sea serpent. The gods, aware of the prophecies, went to battle, leading to the fall of many including Odin, Thor, and other key figures. Despite its cataclysmic nature, the legend spoke of a rebirth, of a new world emerging from the waters, inhabited by a few surviving gods and humans. Freya's role in Ragnarok remains largely unspoken in surviving myths. However, her associations with fate and magic particularly a mastery of Scyther, implying that she had a deep understanding of the events leading up to Ragnarok. She was believed to have more knowledge about these foretold events than even Odin himself, though she was reluctant to share it. Freya's significant role in Norse afterlife, as she selects half of the various slain in battle for a realm, Folkvangr, suggests her importance in Ragnarok, and this role, along with her possible command over the Valkyries, places her at the center of the battlefield and fate itself. However, despite being a goddess of war, Freya chose to align more with her peaceful aspects, love and beauty, by staying out of the actual war. 
His same could not be said for her brother, Freyil, and father, Njörl, who both fell during the events of Ragnarok. Venture with me into the shadowy realms of ontology, where hidden connections and forbidden knowledge await. Together, we will uncover the dark secrets that lie beneath the surface of these ancient tales, revealing that there is much more to mythology than mere stories, and there are profound truths waiting to be discovered. So, join me on this journey, and let's explore the mysteries together. Thanks for watching.